Good, happy Sunday morning, everyone. I'm Riley King, and welcome to this edition of Politics with Riley King. Let's begin. First up, Sanders, other Democrat candidates, question cost of party voter list. Let's take a listen to the video from WMUR News 9, Adam Sexton. Democrats have filed to run for Congress in New Hampshire's 1st Congressional District, but only a handful can afford to purchase the state party's voter list. Candidate Levy Sanders says the New Hampshire Democratic Party is charging $37,500 for the list, and he believes that is unfair. It's absolutely not, not a level of playing for at all. Absolutely not. Other candidates share his frustration. Lincoln Soldati says the cost of the list is outrageous. Terrence O'Rourke says it's even worse when you consider Republicans get their list for free. Mark McKenzie calls it a bar to working family candidates. But Sanders sees more than just a financial hurdle. He believes history is repeating itself. Unbelievably, I do. I mean, it, it's really quite remarkable. Uh, in 2016, as, as you're aware, uh, the Democratic Party made it very difficult for folks uh, to get involved in debates. Sanders contends the Democratic establishment is throwing up additional roadblocks in his race by holding forums rather than full-on debates. In his opinion, putting outsider candidates at a disadvantage. Hillary Clinton uh, and Bernard Sanders, this is happening exactly what's happening right now. The New Hampshire Democratic Party declined comment for this report. In 2016, Chairman Ray Buckley made a visible display of neutrality in the first in the nation primary standing alongside Senator Bernie Sanders as he filed and accepting the longtime independent as a Democrat. It's a different Sanders on the ballot in 2018, although he is making a very familiar case. It's imperative that people contact the New Hampshire Democratic Party and demand debates. It's important to note that the list the party has is more than just a list. It contains detailed historical data and modeling based on decades of campaigning, so it's a lot more than your basic town and city voter rolls. In the studio, Adam Sexton, WMUR, News 9. Okay, and there you go on that video and that report. Trump approves disaster declaration for 2nd March, Nor'easter. President Donald Trump has approved a disaster declaration in connection with a second major winter storm. The declaration, which covers the storm that hit on March 13th to the 14th, makes funding available for Essex, Middlesex, Norfolk, and Suffolk, and Worcester counties. Funds will be made available to reimburse cities, towns, and state agencies for response and repair costs associated with the storm. Almost two feet of snow fell in some areas during the first day of the storm. The cost of the snow removal is one area eligible for federal cost sharing. Trump had previously approved a disaster declaration related to the storms that affected Massachusetts on March 2nd and 3rd. Trump finds it inconceivable lawyer would take a client. President Donald Trump said Saturday he finds it inconceivable that a lawyer would take a client as he weighed in as 
the disclosure that in the weeks before the 2016 election, his then personal attorney secretly recorded their discussion about a potential payment for a former Playboy model's account of having an affair with Trump. FBI believed Trump campaign aide Carter Page was recruited by Russians. Let's take a listen to the video from ABC News. Verizon lets you mix and match your family unlimited plan, so everybody gets the plan they want without paying for things they don't. Jet setting moms can video chat from Europe. Movie obsessed teens can stream obscure cinema. It's like everyone gets their own flavor of unlimited. <laughs> it's a metaphor. Simile, not a metaphor. Hmm. Well played. One family, different unlimited plans, starting at $40 per line. Buy one of our best phones and get one free when you switch. All on the network you deserve. We need to get the best and the finest, and if we don't, we'll be in trouble for a long period of time. The national security advisor is the first to go, less than a month on the job. Flynn made it clear he was leaving because he had misled Vice President Pence and other senior officials about his conversations with the Russian ambassador. The director of the FBI, James Comey, fired. Learning of it on television, he thought it was a prank. He wasn't doing a good job, very simply. He was not doing a good job. Outgoing press secretary Sean Spicer told Sean Hannity Trump didn't want him to quit. My decision was to uh, recommend to the president that I give Anthony and, and Sarah uh, a clean slate to start from. The scapegoat this week, outgoing chief of staff Reince Priebus. Although it's always a little mix when things like this happen, I generally feel pretty good. Right's previous, a good man. The controversial communications director, known as the Mooch, quickly made waves, attacking several senior White House officials in a tirade to the New Yorker. In a statement, the White House saying Scaramucci felt it was best to give Kelly a clean slate and the ability to build his own team. After his abrupt ouster as the president's chief strategist, Steve Bannon wasted no time getting back to being a populist firebrand. Now I'm free. I've got my hands back on my weapons. Hope Hicks, the president's longest serving aide, with the president even before his campaign. She is now stepping down tonight. The White House says the timing of this resignation is coincidental. We've just learned that President Trump has put out a tweet announcing that he has a new secretary of state. Mike Pompeo, the CIA director, is in. Rex Tillerson, the current secretary of state, is out. H.R. McMaster, there have been reports about him getting fired for months. Now he is out. The White House said it was a mutual decision. EPA Chief Scott Pruitt has resigned amid growing ethics scandals and calls for him to step down. All told, Pruitt was facing at least 12 separate investigations by multiple government agencies and was repeatedly accused of using his position for personal benefit. Okay, and there you go on that video and that report. And that does it for this edition of Politics with Riley King. I hope you all enjoyed this edition of Politics with Riley King. And have a wonderful rest of your Sunday, everyone. And have a great week. And I'll see you back here next Sunday for another edition of Politics with Riley King. Goodbye, everyone.